Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and welcome to Sound Explained Distortion, where I will be explaining a little bit more about clipping, soft clipping, and saturation. Clipping is an effect that occurs when your audio surpasses zero decibels in 16-bit, 24-bit, and certain other audio file format. And there are also certain kinds of effects that may purposefully introduce clipping into your sound. So let's look at clipping using a sine waveform. So right here, I'm using the Fruity Wave Shaper to simulate hard clipping. So you'll see as I increase the level of this sine wave, it will exceed the threshold and start to hard clip. So you can see over on the oscilloscope here, once it passes the threshold, all the sound that is above the threshold gets completely flattened. And as the sine wave is clipped more and becomes flattened more and more, you can hear different harmonics added to the sound. You know, it starts to sound more and more like a square wave than it does a sine wave. And that's kind of what hard clipping is actually doing. It's making your sound a little bit more square. So the less you're clipping, the less harmonics will be added to the sound. And the more you're clipping, the more harmonics will be added. So that's hard clipping. And now I'm going to take a look at soft clipping, which I will also be creating with the Fruity Wave Shaper. So you'll see that instead of instantly flattening out the waveform once it exceeds the threshold, soft clipping keeps some of that roundness in the waveform. It doesn't shave off those amplitude values as sharply. And you can hear that the harmonics introduced aren't quite as present as they are in the hard clipping example. Yeah, it doesn't get quite as bright. And saturation is essentially very similar to soft clipping. You know, it still limits the amplitude of a waveform in a much softer way than hard clipping does. And saturation and soft clipping have both been created to kind of emulate what happens when you clip on analog gear. Because the saturation effect that you get from pushing the level too high on analog gear is a lot more pleasant than in the digital world and a lot of people even like the effect that it has on the sound. And this is why there are so many digital emulations of that kind of saturation sound out there. So as you can see with this example, what clipping really does is makes your sound a little bit more square. By flattening out any sound that exceeds the threshold. And you've probably heard to avoid clipping at all costs. You know, um, a lot of producers treat clipping as if it's some kind of evil black magic. And if you clip at all, your song is going to summon a demon and just destroy everything. You know, you, know, you can't clip, you're not allowed to clip. It's the worst thing in the world. It produces a horrible sound, but nobody really explains why. You know, I've seen it so many times, people say don't clip, but they don't back that information up. And my personal opinion about the matter is not on the same lines as other people. And I'm going to explain it in this video, and give you an example of both when clipping might be okay, and when you would probably really want to avoid it. So in the playlist here, I have two different sounds. I have kind of a saw pluck sound for a dance track. And then I have a piano. So 
So let's listen to how clipping affects this saw sound. Okay, so we're going to start off by clipping it a little bit. You can see right now it's peaking at about minus four decibels. And we're going to cut a couple of those decibels off using clipping. And now it's down below minus eight. Now, a lot of you probably can't even tell the difference between these two sounds. What I can hear is that it loses a little bit of its brightness, which may not be a big deal. So let's clip it even more and see how that sounds. So you can probably hear it a lot better now. And the biggest problem here is, you know, you're just losing the dynamics. It really sounds like overly compressed more than anything. You know, you still don't particularly hear the clipping as much. You know, I don't really hear any horrible sound that everybody talks about that you get from clipping. Now, obviously the overly compressed sound is something that you want to avoid, but I don't hear anything that's as bad as people talk about. And then here's another example just with soft clipping to give you an idea. Now let's listen to the piano with the same amount of clipping. So you'll see that the piano is also peaking at about minus four decibels. So the clipping is going to be affecting it about the same amount. So we'll start off by clipping it at about minus eight again. And you can hear instantly, you know, that produces a very apparent sound, a very, a not a good sound. Whereas with the saw sound, it was hardly even noticeable. And if we clip it even more, it's going to become even worse. And you know, that is definitely a bad sound. You know, it definitely sounds horrible. That sounds as bad as people make it out to sound. Um, and even with soft clipping, you'll hear it doesn't sound very good either. It's not nearly as apparent as the hard clipping, but you can still hear it and it still doesn't sound very good. So that's really what people are talking about when they say to not clip, to avoid clipping at all costs. So with certain instrument sounds, clipping and soft clipping are both going to be very apparent, but with other sounds, especially very harmonic rich sounds like a snare drum or a saw wave or other digital waveforms especially, clipping isn't going to be anywhere near as apparent. The biggest thing that I've noticed while clipping digital sounds, synthesized sounds, is that you lose some brightness. And so here's the saw waveform. And if I use a linear phase EQ to filter out some of that low end, you'll see that it still peaks pretty high on the oscilloscope. In spite of me removing that low end. 
So you can kind of think that in this saw wave, a lot of the higher harmonics are present in that big peak. And so if I hard clip this waveform, you can hear that some of that brightness is lost. And if I clip it even more, you'll hear it even more. So that's the biggest difference in the sound that I've noticed with clipping certain digital waveforms. Now I still really wouldn't recommend you allow your final output of your song to clip the master on export. I personally employ some saturation or soft clipping on the master before exporting, but doing it that way allows me to control it, as opposed to me completely leaving it to the will of the export. But I do use the wave shaper quite a bit to either soft clip or hard clip various sounds in my production to help me achieve a louder mix with much lower peaks on the master. So the point of this video isn't to tell you that clipping is okay or that you should clip, but I did want to give kind of a different perspective than is often given in regards to clipping because I think it is important to know about. Because I use clipping and I use soft clipping and it really helps me get a louder sound while I keep that punch because if I were to compress a sound the same amount, a lot of that punch would be lost from what I've found. So what you do is up to you, clip at your own risk, and yeah.